Hello and welcome to another Vetro Core and today we'll be taking a look at this. This is the A95. Could this be the best budget phone for gaming? Let's find out. So this is the new A95 from Blackview, a budget phone that promises to be more powerful than the other cheap Chinese smartphones. Let's dig in deeper and find out if it is going to be a worthy phone for playing games on, since that's what this channel is all about. So first of all, what do we get in the box? Well, let's do a jump cut and find out. And like by magic, here's the content. So what do we get in the box? Well, we got our USB-C charging cable, our charger, which is a 16 watt fast charge, substantial manual, SIM tool, and a transparent case, and of course, a screen protector as well. Now let's take a look at the actual phone in a bit more detail. So taking a look at the back of the phone, you can see it's got this lovely rainbow shifting color on it. The phone does come in various colors, but I chose this one because I do like this effect. Now you may see that it has three cameras up here, but no, it's actually got one. The back camera is a 20 megapixel Sony sensor, while the front camera up here is an 8 megapixel camera. Around the side of the machine, you can see we've got the SIM tray. On the bottom, we've got our USB-C input and speaker and microphone. On this side, we've got the volume rocker and the power button, which doubles up as a fingerprint sensor. And on the top, we got another microphone socket. So the fingerprint sensor works really well. Just a quick tap and as you can see, the phone comes on. Really, really easy to use. So let's run down the specs of the A95 from Blackview. It has eight gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty impressive for the budget phone. 128 gigabytes of storage. It's got an 8 megapixel front camera and a 20 megapixel rear camera. It's got an 8 core CPU using a MediaTek Helio P70, which is actually a pretty decent processor, especially for this price. The screen is 6.5 inches HD display, 720 by 1600, and we have a 4380 milliamp battery. Operating system is Android 11 with the latest software update security patch and it runs uh, Blackview's own operating system on top of that called Doke and this is Doke operating system 2.1 but basically it's just Android. Now while the screen may not be the best screen out there it certainly is nice and vibrant and the blacks are black and the colors really do pop as you can see right now. Not bad at all. The actual casing of the phone is plastic but again, this is a budget device, so not too bad. The fingerprint sensor on the side that doubles up as a power button is very sensitive and works like a treat, no problems at all. And for those of you who do not like heavy phones, this one is a good one for you. It's only 195 grams, not bad at all. So this is a gaming channel, so we're gonna check out some games on the device since that's what we are mostly interested in here on the VetroCore channel. But before we do that, let's check out the cameras and see how well they perform. We'll do some indoor filming and we'll do some outdoor filming in the night. And we'll also take a couple of photographs. And here we are taking a look at some video footage recorded indoors with the lights on. With recording in 1080p with HDR switched on. Let's see how well the autofocus fixes in on that logo there. Not bad at all. That is not too bad. And will it focus in on this with the reflections? Mm, it's not doing a... Yeah, it's doing a pretty decent job there. So yes, as you can see, the autofocus does work. Not bad at all. Okay, let's see how it handles nighttime filming outside where it is pretty dark. All right, so here we are, we are outside and we are using the front camera at the moment. And as you can see, it is a little bit wet outside and yeah, it is a bit dark as well. It is about 6.30 p.m. But yeah, this uh, front camera is performing pretty well outside here in the uh, early evening. So let's go and check out the back camera 
are wondering if it will perform as well as the front camera. We'll find out. Okay, so here we are recording in 1080p and we have the HDR switched on and it does look a lot brighter on this video than what it does in real life. And yeah, not too bad. I have noticed that the frame rate does drop though when uh, the light is dark. Let's see if we can do the zoom function as well. Here we go, times two zoom. Trying to zoom in uh, or focus on the uh, McDonald's logo there, but uh, let's see if it wants to do that. All right, let's return back to normal. So there you go, that is the quality of the back camera in low daylight. Eh, not too bad, I guess, especially for the budget phone. And also, let's take a look at some photographs taken on the A95. So with the gaming, we're going to start off with an Android game. This is Asphalt 8. Let's see how this plays. Now this game does have pretty impressive graphics. So um, I'm hoping that this phone can handle it. We'll soon find out. By the way, we're playing with a Bluetooth controller connected to the phone. And I can tell you from just looking through all the menus, it feels pretty solid. Okay, so far so good. No stuttering there. We are using the highest graphics settings as well. And we've got analog controls. Can we change the view of the car? Yeah, we can. Take a jump here. Oh, no, nope. <laughs> I thought that was a jump. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, this seems to be handling pretty well. We've got quite a lot of graphics, uh, graphical effects going on here. And it's running nice and smooth. So it seems that native Android gaming will be quite playable on this device. Okay, next up we're going to take a look at some uh, Dreamcast emulation and also some uh, Atomos Wave emulation using the uh, V-Dream emulator. So let's go with a bit of Atomos Wave emulation first. We'll go with Fist of the North Star. Let's see if this phone can handle the emulation of Atomos Wave. Oh yeah, that is working perfectly. No frame drops or anything. Pretty impressive. Okay, let's check out a 3D game running on the Dreamcast. Let's see how it handles that. Now this is running on the screen's native uh, resolution, so it's running at uh, 720p, the actual uh, native resolution of the panel of this phone. So uh, that's higher resolution than the Dreamcast. And yeah, look at that. That is nice and smooth. No graphical glitches. No skipping frames, looking good. 
Okay, let's get into the actual game part and see if that makes a difference. And here we are in the actual game section and yeah, as you can see, perfectly smooth, no issues at all. Wow, that is, uh, that's impressive. Okay, just in case it might be a fluke with Shenmue, let's try out another 3D game running on the Dreamcast. But before we do that, let's talk to Naomi. And let's see how this plays. Now this needs to be really responsive. Um, being an arcade fighting game, so it's going to be interesting to see how it uh, handles uh, running on this device plus uh, using the Bluetooth controller with it. Let's see if we've got any noticeable lag. Nope, <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> Straight away, I could tell. Alright, so things are looking good for the phone so far. Let's check out some PlayStation Portable emulation. Okay, here we are with the free version of PPSSPP. We've got two games loaded in. We've got Doris Burst and Parasite Eve. We'll go with Doris Burst first and see how that handles on this device because Doris Burst is a bit of an easier game to emulate than uh, Parasite Eve. Hopefully those uh, button controls will disappear off the screen soon. I hope. There we go. Again, controls are responsive. So no need to worry about lag issues. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, move up the uh, stakes a little by loading up Parasite Eve on the PlayStation Portable. Okay, here we are in game and as you can see, it is moving very smoothly. Doesn't seem to be a problem here. Oop. Okay, let's uh, take out this guy. Ooh. Let's change my gun over. There we go. That's him dead. Okay, so it seems that P uh, PlayStation Portable emulation is also quite solid. Let's check out the Sega Saturn. How is that going to work? Okay, so here we go with the free version of Yaba San Shiro. Got a couple of Sega Saturn games in here. Let's start off with the 2D one, Batsugun, and see how this works. Yeah, that feels good. And we don't seem to have any frame skipping. That looks nice and smooth. I know you're watching this video in uh, 30 frames per second, but uh, this game is running 60 frames per second. Take my word for it, or I hope you will. <laughs> um, yeah, lovely and smooth. Okay, let's drop a bomb and see if that slows things down. Oops, killing myself. Nope. Okay, let's move on to a more demanding game, a 3D game running in high resolution. I think it's time for some Last Bronx. 
Okay, here we go with Las Bronx running on the Sega Saturn. Let's see how well this works. Now this is quite a demanding game because it runs in a higher resolution and it's 3D. So um, I'm going to expect a couple of frame skips here. Right, we had a little bit there on the audio. Yeah, we've got a couple of skipping on the audio there. You can hear it. But uh, speed-wise, the game seems to be uh, handling quite well. The audio is skipping a little bit though. You can hear it. But as we know, Sega Saturn emulation is a tough one and we are using a free version of the emulator. So that should be taken into account as well. Okay, let's check out Nintendo 64. Now what will be interesting is if the analog controls are actually connected up to this. Should be. Yes they are. Alright. Whoops. <laughs> Again, nice and smooth. So that's running just as well as it would on a real Nintendo 64 hardware. Not bad at all. Okay, let's check out GoldenEye because that is one that normally causes issues on emulation. Okay, here we are. Let me get myself acquainted to the controls. Uh, oh no, I put my gun away. Crap. Where's fire? There it is. Bloody hell, can't hit him. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Now that puts my gun away. Hmm, not too bad. I think it is dropping a couple of frames. It does look a little bit uh, choppy. But certainly playable. Oh, I'm dead already. <laughs> Terrible. Okay. I'll take a look at one more machine getting emulated, and that's the PlayStation, and we'll use Duck Station for that. Okay, so this is Bloody Raw 2 running on the PlayStation emulator, Duck Station. And yeah, it's running really well. Let's just start another round and make sure there's no uh, glitching or frame skipping or anything like that. Yeah, that is silky smooth. And because it's running on Duck Station, we have the nice graphical enhancements to make it look better than what it does on a real PlayStation. Okay, let's just check out one more PlayStation game. Alright, this is Ridge Racer R4. Then we've got PlayStation Emulator Duck Station and... I just thought for a minute I didn't have the controls configured. Thankfully I do. And as to be expected, it's lovely. Lovely and smooth. Just as it should be. So yeah, 
As far as emulation goes, this is a very good phone. It emulates pretty much everything you'd expect it to, plus others which it doesn't. So of course it's going to emulate all your 8-bit and 16-bit machines like Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, Master System, Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Original, Famicom. And then it even emulates some of the big boys such as PSP, Dreamcast, Atomus Wave and even some Sega Saturn. Not bad at all is it? So there we have it, that is the Blackview A95. A pretty decent budget mobile smartphone. Now believe it or not, I've actually had this in my possession since December 2021. Yeah, that long I've had hold of this. So I've had plenty of time to, you know, use it as a smartphone, work just fine by the way. Use it as a movie player, 4K movies on YouTube, it can handle them. Can't display the 4K on the screen, mind you, but it can play them. Uh, as a music player, yeah, works fine. Uh, as a games machine, as you just saw, works fine. It's a pretty respectable device, and I do like this side uh, fingerprint sensor here, and it is pretty responsive, as you can see. See? Just press it, and on it comes. Very, very responsive there. Now, what I don't like about this phone is the fact that they've went and put this iPhone-style blocker cameras on the back when we've only got one camera on there. I mean, why do that? You're just uh, you're kind of deceiving your customers a bit. But at least in the uh, spec sheets and on the uh, site itself, it doesn't say it has three back cameras. It does actually say it has one back camera. Now the cameras themselves, yeah, they're pretty good for taking photos, not bad at all. Video wise, it's stable enough, it's not bad, especially, again, for the budget device. So would I buy the Blackview A95? Well, yeah, I would buy it. If I was on a budget and I wanted a reasonable phone, especially one to play games on, I would pick this one up because it does perform quite well indeed. So there's a link in the video description down below if you want to get one of these, check it out. It's not affiliated by me, but if you do want one of these phones, check it out. There may also be a discount password in there. Uh, well, I'll have to get onto Blackview and see about that. But if there is, that'll be in the video the link in the video <laughs> description link down below. All right. But until then, guys, keep on gaming. Enjoy your games. And remember, if you're after the budget smartphone, why not check out the A95? All right, see ya.